In the meanwhile, Prince Ahmed has collected a considerable force. and had gained further advantage over Selim's forces, which, if vigorously followed up, might have given him the throne. But Ahmed, so professionally brave, was far inferior to his brother in energy and perseverance. Selim reinforced his army, and on the 24th of April 1513, a pitched battle was fought in which Ahmed was completely defeated and taken prisoner. His doom was the same as that of Korkut and was executed by the same officer Sina. Before that, Ahmed had begged to see the Sultan. But the request was refused, and Selim remarked that he would give his brother such a dom domain as fitted an Ottoman prince. Ahmed understood the word, and when Sinan entered, gave him himself up to this, without resistance. Before he was bow strung, he drew from his finger a javel, said to equal in value a year's revenue of Romania, and charged Sinan to convoy, convey it to sell him as his brother's parting gift, with a hope that the Sultan would excuse the smallness of his word, its word. Ahmed was buried with the five murdered young princes at Bursa. Selim now thought himself secure on the throne and prepared for foraging warfare. Fortunately for Christendom, it was against other Mohammedan powers that his energies were directed and he willingly arranged or renewed a series of treaties with the different states of Europe, which secured tranquility along the western frontiers of the Ottoman Empire. Selim had not fallen off from his ancestors' zeal for the fate of Islam. He was indeed the most bigot of all the Turkish sultans, but it was the very vehemence of his bigotry that made him hate the heretics of Islam even more than the Jews of Christendom. The schism of the Sunnites and the Shis, the first of whom acknowledge, and the last of whom repudiate the three immediate successors of the Prophet. The Caliph Abu Bakr, Amr, and Osman had distracted the Mohammedan world from the earliest times. The Ottoman Turks have been Sunnis. The contrary tents, tenets have prevailed in Persia, and the great founder of the Safide dynasty in that country, Shah Ismail, was as eminent for his zeal for the Shia tenets. As for his ability in the council and his valor in the field. The doctrine of Shi's had begun.
to spread among the subjects of the sublime party before Selim came to the throne. And so, the, the Sultan, the Ulema, and by far the larger portion of the Osmans held strictly to the orthodoxy of Shanism. The Shi'is were numerous in every province, and they seemed to be rapidly gaining proselytes. Selim determined to crush heresy at home before he went forth to combat it abroad. And in a deliberate spirit of fanatic cruelty, he planned and executed a general slaughter of all his subjects who were supposed to have fallen away from what the sovereign considered to be the only true fate. This is a death to which the massacre of San Bartolomeo in the same century offers to set a parallel. And indeed, the treachery, treachery by which had crime to Christendom was accomplished makes it the, it the more detestable of the two. Salim did not allure his victims by false professions of esteem or by profaning the rights of hospitality, but he organized a system of secret police throughout his dominions, which contemporary writers term admirable and the, he thus obtained a complete list of all the Mohammedans in European and in Asiatic Turkey, who were suspected of belonging to the sect of the Shi'is. The number of the proscribed, including men, women and children, amounted to 70,000. Selim distributed troops throughout the empire, and stationed them in each city and district, in strength proportionate to the number of Shi'is that it contained. He then suddenly sent forth the messengers of death, and the whole of those unhappy beings were arrested. 40,000 of them were slain. The rest were condemned to perpetual imprisonment. The contemporaneous Ottoman historians give Selim the title of the just for this act of atrocity. The modern German historian will remark that it is still more revolting to read that the Christian ambassadors at, at the Sultan's court adopted the surname and that it found applied to Selim in the reports of the massacre which they sent to their respective countries. Indeed, at a later time, and when Selim had shown by many more ferocious deeds, how deeply his soul was incarnadined with cruelty. The Venetian Mocenigo, Mo who had been accredited to his court and had known him well, declared that he never met a man who was Sultan Selim's equal in virtue. Justice, humanity, humanity, and greatness of mind. The slaughter of his corally religionists increased the animosity 
with which I smile already regarded Selim. And the two sovereign prepared for an encounter with equal rancor and resolution. Many grounds of quarrel besides that of religious difference existed between them. Shai might had humbled the Ottoman arms in some encounters with troops of the governors of Turkish provinces near his frontier in Bayezid's reign. He had also sheltered the fugitive Prince Amurat, son of Selim's brother Ahmed, and he now assembled his troops. With the arrowed intention of deposing and punishing Selim, and of placing young Amurat on the Turkish throne. Selim, on his part, made his preparations for an aggressive campaign with his accustomed vigor and determination. The renown of the Persian arms and the skill and good fortune of Shah Ismail was widely spread throughout the East. And when Selim announced his intention of attacking Persia, the members of his council were ominously mute. Trees, the Sultan, told them that he would lead them to war, and Trees they spake not. Till at last, a common Janissary, named Abdullah, who stood by on guard, broke the silence and, throwing himself on his knees before the Sultan, told him that he and his comrades would rejoice in marching under him to fight the Shah of Persia. Selim made him by pay of the Sanjak of Selnik. On the spot. The Turkish army mustered in the plain of Yenisher. Selim began his march on the 20th of April 1514, on the Thursday, a day of the week thought fortunate by the Ottomans. On the 27th, a Persian spy was seized in the camp and Selim sent him to Ismail with a letter containing a declaration of war. Von Hammer cites this remarkable document from the contemporary Oriental writers and, as he truly states, it admirably represents the general spirit of the age and the special character of Selim himself. It is as Follows. The supreme being, who is at the same time the sovereign of the destiny of men and, he, and the source of all light and all knowledge, announces in his holy scripture that his true religion, religion is the religion of the Muslims and that he who professes another religion far from being heard and saved, will be cast out among the repro reprobates at the great day of the last judgment. Again he said, the God of truth that his designs and his decrees are immutable, and all the actions of men ought to have regard to him, and that he who abandons the good paths shall be com condemned to hell fire and eternal punishment. Place us, Lord, in the number of the true believers, of those who walk in the paths of salvation, and take heed to turn away from vice and unbelief. May the poorest and most holy blessings be upon Muhammad. All
Mustafa, the master of two worlds, the prince of prophets, and blessed also be his descendants and those who follow his law. I chief and sovereign, sovereign of Ottomans, I the master of the heroes of the age, I who combine the force and power of the fairy, fairy dawn, the majesty of Alexander the Great, the justice and the clemency of Kaikeshrev, I the exterminator of the idolaters, the destroyer of the enemies of the true faith, the terror of the tyrants, and of the pharaohs of the age, I before whom proud and imperious. Kings are abased and the strongest captors shattered. I, the glorious Sultan Selim Khan, son of the Sultan Bayezid Khan, who was the son of the Sultan Muhammad Khan, who was the son of the Sultan Murat Khan, I graciously addresses my work to thee. Emir is my chief of the Persian troops, who are like who art like in tyranny to Zodak, Zohak and of Raziab, and art destined to perish like the last Dara, to make thee know that the words of the Most High are not the frail productions of caprice of foolish or foolishment, but they contain an infinity of mystery impenetrable by the spirit of man. The Lord himself hath said in his holy book, We have not created the heaven and earth that they should be a sport. Man, who is the noblest of the creatures, and a compendium of the marvels of God, is consequently the living image of the Creator on earth. It is he that had made, yeah, all men, the caliphs of the earth, because men who units the faculties of the soul with perfection of body, is the only being that can comprehend the attributes of the divinity and adore his sublime beauties. But man does not possess that rare intelligence, nor does he arrive at that divine knowledge except in our religion and by keeping the commandments of the prince of prophets the caliph of caliphs the right arm of the god of mercy it is therefore only by the practice of the true religion that a man will prosper in this world and deserve eternal life in the world to come. As for the Emir Ismail, such a reward will never be thy lot. For thou hast deserted the path of salvation and of the holy commandment, so hast defiled the purity of the doctrine of Islam. Two has dishonored and cast down the altars of the Lord. 
Thou hast by unlawful and tyrannical devices usurped a scepter in the east. Thou hast by base stratagem alone raised thyself. Thou sprung from the dust to the seat of splendor and glory. Thou hast opened to Muslim, Muslims the gate of tyranny and oppression. Thou hast joined in cruelty, perjury, and blasphemy to impiety, heresy, and sheism. Thou hast under the cloak and cloak of hypocrisy sown in all parts the seeds of trouble and sedition. Thou hast raised the standard of on gold lines, gold lines. Thou hast given way to the say, shameful fascians. And abandoning thyself without restraint to the most disgraceful excess. Thou hast united the band of Muslim laws, and thou hast permitted licentiousness, and raped the massacre of the most virtuous and honorable of men. The destruction of shrines and temples, the profanation of tombs, contempt of the ulema, of teacher of the law, and the descendants of the prophet and the degradation of the Quran, and the cursing of the true and lawful caliphs, Abu Bakr, Omar, and Osman, therefore, as the first duty of a Muslim, and above, of, above all of a pious prince, is to obey the commandments, O oh, ye faithful who believe perform Ye the decrees of God. The Ulema and our teachers of the law have pronounced the deed upon the upon the prejurer and blasphemer as as those art, and have laid upon every good Muslim the sacred duty of taking arms for the defense of religion and for the destruction of heresy and implicity in say person and the persons of those who follow thee.